What are your thoughts on life outside of this planet? I think there must be. If you look at the history of life on Earth, then so Earth formed and it was just a, it was no life, it was a ball of rock. And almost as soon as it cooled down, we see evidence of life. And that we know that the conditions that led to the origin of life on Earth were present on Mars 3.8, 4 billion years ago. And we know that they're present on Europa today. So I don't see that there's anything special. Life is just chemistry. I'm sure there are other civilizations out there in the universe because there are two trillion galaxies. I, I just can't believe this hasn't happened in other places. The question is how often does it happen and how widely spaced are the civilizations? And I think they're very widely spaced. And I think there may be one or two per galaxy on the average. From this distant vantage point, the Earth might not seem of any particular interest. But for us, it's different. Consider again that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever was, lived out their lives. The aggregate of our joy and suffering, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, hopeful child, inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there on a mote of dust suspended in a sunbeam. The earth is a very small stage in a vast cosmic arena. No scientist can picture that number. I mean, he, even the small number, 200 billion, <laughs> which is the, the number of stars number, right. in yeah. one galaxy. And then when you say two trillion galaxies, you, you know, that, that's, I challenge anyone to be able to picture that. But it is the reality that we've observed. We know that the universe, or very strongly suspect, that the universe is much bigger than the piece we can see. So we have good reason to think that's the case. Whether it's infinite or not is another question. And then that goes to your, you know, that can you picture infinity? Well, no one can picture infinity. We say the universe began 13.8 billion years ago. But actually, all we know really was the universe was very hot and very dense at that time. And we have some theories that the universe was in existence before that. And that means that actually the universe could, could have always been there, eternal. The idea that it might have been around forever is more frightening somehow than the fact that it began. And, uh, it's, it's interesting the way that people's minds work. What, what terrifies you the most, an eternal universe or a finite universe? When you look at the ingredients of the universe, the number one ingredient is hydrogen. Next is helium, oxygen, carbon, nitrogen. Those are the top ingredients in the universe. And you look at Earth, because we like thinking of ourselves as special, we say, oh, we're special. But what are we made of? Well, what's the number one sort of molecule in the body? It's, it's water, it's water. Well, what's water made of? H2O, hydrogen and oxygen. Hmm. In fact, if you rank the elements in the human body, Number one in the human body is hydrogen. Matches the universe. Number two is oxygen. Matches the universe. Number three, carbon. Matches the universe. Number four, nitrogen. Matches the universe. So, 
we learned in the last 15 years that, of course, not only do we exist in this universe, it is the universe itself that exists within us. There are people who are upset by that fact, saying, well, that, well, that means we're not special? Well, I think it, it's special in another kind of way. Because when you look up at the night sky, it's no longer we're here and that's there. It's that we are part of that. Now, are we alone in the universe? We're made of the most common ingredients there are. Isn't that rare? So, if we ask ourselves, are we alone in the universe, it would be inexcusably egocentric to suggest that we are alone in the cosmos. The universe, too vast. There are more stars in the universe than grains of sand in all the beaches of the world. And how about life on Earth? How, is it hard to form? Just because we don't know how to do it in the lab doesn't mean nature had problems. So it may be, given that information, that given the right ingredients, which are everywhere, life may be inevitable. So that when I look up at the night sky, and I know that yes, we are part of this universe, we are in this universe, but perhaps more important than both of those facts, is that the universe is in us. Many people feel small because they're small and the universe is big, but I feel big because my atoms came from those stars. It's so unbelievably compelling, though, to consider the idea that somewhere out there, there's another civilization that may be even more advanced than us. And this, would... this thought of it is just so attractive. It's, it's, it's incredible. There, there, should, there should be. If, if civilizations are common, then there should be civilizations ahead of us. Yes. Because there's been so much time. But wouldn't you want to see what that's like? Yeah, I mean, we've been so around. compelling. You imagine the time scales. We've been around as a civilization. Let's let's give it, say forty thousand years. I don't know how long our civilization has been around. Let's say that the, the the galaxy is pretty much as old as the universe. It's thirteen billion years worth of time. So the idea that there are no, no civilizations arose, you know, a hundred million years ago, two hundred million years ago, one billion years ago, and imagine what they'd be like if they'd survived. I mean, we've been, we've been around, we've had science, uh, let's say since Newton or Copernicus, 500 years at most. We've been, look what we've done. We've, we've gone beyond the solar system with Voyager. We've walked on the moon. Um, we've, we're, we're about to go to Mars, I would think. So we're about to begin colonizing our own solar system. Um, so we've done that in 500 years. <laughs> so imagine a million years right. in the future. If we survive a million years into the future, actually even a few thousand years into the future, we will be exploring the galaxy. We will have spacecraft that are going to other stars. We will be doing it if we last. Like if there is a civilization that's a million times more advanced than us, mm. been around here for you know millions of years of life as opposed to quarter million, why would they why would they let us know? Like, would they look at us dropping bombs on each other and polluting the ocean, sucking all the fish out? And yeah. Why would they, like, look at these crude monkeys. Look at that. They don't, they're so far beyond where they need to be before they could join the galactic civilization it's network true. or whatever. It is true. It's, it's an argument that yeah. it, technology so advanced would be difficult for us to detect. So it's possible that there are space probes all over the place that are so small and it's so efficient and use so little energy that we just don't see them. I suppose that is possible.
The earth is a very small stage in a vast cosmic arena. <laughs>